Hi folks, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to search for files in Windows Explorer and incorporate also how to download a file from the internet and install it to your hard drive. I'm going to install an audio program called Audacity. It's a very good program. I've used it before and I want to install it on this computer. So first I will open up Firefox, double click on the Firefox icon on the desktop. It'll take me to Google because Google is set as my home page. I'm just going to type in the search bar. download audacity and the link is here and I know that this is the correct link because it is what they call an open source program which mainly means that it's free and the place where you can get open source programs is from a website called SourceForge. So I'm going to click on this link. As you see, it opens up the web page for Audacity. And it says Audacity 2.05, which is the latest version of Audacity. It's for Windows 2000, Stroke XP, Stroke Vista, stroke windows 7 which is what my operating system is it's windows 7 so i know that this is the correct one so i'll click on this link i can download it as an installer which means it will install once i download this file that will install it to my hard drive this is another alternative way that you can download it as a zip file but i prefer the installer so I'll just click on the link for the installer file. Opens up a window and I need to save this to my hard drive. I'm going to click on save file and this window comes up because I have my browser Firefox set up to ask me where I want to download files to. Some people might have the browser set up to automatically download files to a pre-chosen folder. But I like to decide where I'm going to put it. And it's no surprise, I'm going to put it in my downloads folder. So I'll double click on the downloads. This is the name of the file, audacity-win-205.com. EXE, which means it's an X file, executing file, or executing file. So I'll click on save. In Firefox, I can go to Tools Downloads to see the progress, and it's already downloaded completely. There's no progress because it's finished downloading. I can right click on this file and say Open Containing Folder. And as you can see, it's in my downloads folder. So as you can see, the Audacity installation file is in my downloads folder. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's assume that I've downloaded the file and I'm not sure where the file is on my hard drive, on my computer. So let me close Windows Explorer. This is the downloads folder from Firefox. So I can close that down. And I will close Firefox as well. So we're back on the desktop. I'm going to close this window for Windows Explorer. So we're on the desktop. So now I want to install the file. 
but let's assume that I don't know where it is on my hard drive so if I open up Windows Explorer and I'm going to do that by holding down the Windows key which is just to the right of the control key bottom left on your keyboard I'll hold that down and just tap the E key once which opens up Windows Explorer I'm going to maximize it now as long as I've got an idea of what the name of the file is I can do a search for it if I'm not sure where it is I can go to this field up here it says search computer and I can just type in audacity and as you can see it has found two versions of the audacity installation file this one here I know where this is this is this is in a C drive and in a folder called software because this is a previous version that I installed but this is the one that we've just downloaded see users mic free downloads it's in my downloads folder now this is one way of searching just by the name if you're not sure what the name is you might just take a guess at it sometimes it works for instance if I just type in AUD into a search it's going to find all of the files that have AUD either in the title or even if it's a text file it may be in the body of the text that it's found AUD but it's the one that we were looking for the one that we we've just downloaded because it's got AUD in the title and as you can see all the AUDs in these different folders or files is highlighted so as long as you have a rough idea of the name of the file there's a pretty good chance that you'll find it by doing a search you could for instance try city we've obviously come up with a quite a few options here but having a scroll down I don't know whether we're gonna be lucky with that file but I don't think we have this time but there's another method that we can use and we can use what is called a wild card and if we go to the beginning of the word and if we put an asterisk before the word and you get the asterisk by holding the shift key down and hitting the 8 key and what the asterisk is is a wild card what it is saying is it doesn't matter what become what comes before the city anything anything that comes before the city but I want something with city in the name or in the title and as you can see this time we have been lucky we've also found other files as well but that asterisk is a wild card as I say so it's saying really search for a file that has anything in the name before city and show them to me another option to do a search if you don't have any luck with that is to add what they call a filter if we click in this field here 
you can see add a search filter and we could for instance like date modified the first option we have is today's date which is the 17th of February 2014 so if I click on that the only one we're going to get shown is the file that we just downloaded because it was downloaded today and therefore it was modified to modified today by modify they mean anything that's happened to the file and because it's been downloaded and saved to our computer the system reckons that it's been modified today and here's the date 17th of the 2nd 2014 so if you have an idea of when the file was modified and you don't have to stick to today's date you can go there's options down here a long time ago earlier this year earlier this month last week earlier this week yesterday but obviously that one is going to come up because it was modified today Another option would be if we get rid of the date modified filter would be the size. If you have an idea of what size the file is, whether it's a small one, and there's the sizes, the options that you have. Empty, well I don't think that would be much good, but you could have 0 to 10 kilobytes, 10 to 100 kilobytes, 100 kilobytes to a megabyte, and so on up until what the system calls gigantic greater than 128 megabytes although these days that's not a gigantic file but if it's greater than that then it will come up a bit so that's uh, a few options there are other options but that's a few options to get you started on doing a search if you download a file that you not sure where you downloaded it or even if you you know you've got a file somewhere on your computer that you can't find give the search options a go to see whether you have any success so okay we've done a search and we've found our file so we know it's this one I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say open file location click on there and as you can see it's opened to the downloads folder which is where we downloaded the file to so now it's time to install our file that we've downloaded and I do that by double clicking on it get the option publisher could not be verified you get these lots of times with uh, Microsoft because it likes to warn you that it's not been signed by Microsoft but I've never had any problem with these so I just click on run select the language to use during the installation well I think I'm happy with English okay I advise you to read these options that come up because some software installation files they will install what's called piggyback software they will install the program that you've downloaded but they also they like to give you the opportunity to add uh, search bars or toolbars for your browsers and so on and I just it, it, it's, it's an annoyance to me because I think well you know the file that I download is the one I want I don't want anything else we click on next you've got to accept or you've got to read the terms the license as I say this is free software I'm going to click next and it's going to tell me where it's going to install the program to you could change this by clicking on here and choosing another location but that's the best location these two program files folders the one we're going to install to at the moment program files 86 that location is for 32-bit programs 
and the other program files is for 64-bit programs and it's mainly dependent on what your system is most computers now are 64-bit but there are still quite a few 32-bit systems around I have one myself but I know this, this computer is a 64-bit operating system but just because it's a 64-bit operating system it doesn't mean to say that the program you're installing is 64-bit the program I'm installing now is 32-bit that's why it's going to go into the 32-bit program files folder so enough of the gobbledygook I shall click OK because I don't I'm happy with that location I shall click next yes I would like a desktop icon which is a short shortcut only click next so it's giving me a summary basically you know destination location additional tasks is a create a desktop icon yes that's fine I'll click on install Uh, click next it's probably giving me some information about the about the program that's been installed but I know that this is a trustworthy program so I'm just going to click next and it gives you the option if you want to launch the program and yes we can do that finish again some plugins options it's giving you and I'm going to click OK because I'm happy with those and here is the Audacity program and you can do recording all sorts of audio tools on this program but the principle is that we've installed a program that we've downloaded from the internet we will close out Windows Explorer and as you can see the shortcut is on the desktop one final thing while we're on the subject of Windows Explorer and talking about 32-bit and 64-bit programs if you want to find the properties of your own system the computer you're on yourself if you open up Windows Explorer and I'll do that by holding down the Windows key tapping the E key once and if you go up here to the system properties and click on that it will give you an overview of your computer the operating system Windows 7 Ultimate in my case it will tell you the Windows Experience Index rating the processor in my case it's an Intel Core i5 3570k processor CPU which is the central processing unit and the speed of it which is 3.4 gigahertz installed memory installed RAM random access memory is 8 gigabytes 7.7 .7 usable and the system type 64-bit operating system this is just about if I had a touch sensitive pad installed but I don't and a computer name and Windows is activated so that's a way of finding out what your system information is one final thing with Windows Explorer this menu is not always showing but if it isn't showing if you go to organize go down to layout and in this case the menu bar is ticked but if I untick it and I do believe that this is the default state of Windows Explorer so if you're looking for the menu and you can't find it just go to the organize tab down to layout and just put a tick on the menu bar and you will have your menu in view that's about it for this tutorial hope it's been useful and see you again soon